to video 4.2 binomial distributions. All right, for this video, we're going to talk about binomial distributions and we're going to do this in the form of a question because it gives it a little bit of context and can make it a little easier to understand. So we have a certain NBA player and he's an 85% free throw shooter, meaning he has the 85% probability of making any given free throw. In one month, he will shoot 100 free throws. Assume each shot is independent from the others, and then the random variable x is defined as the number of free throws he makes out of 100 attempts. And then it asks us to describe the distribution of x. So we're being asked to describe a distribution, but not just any distribution, the distribution of x. So describing a distribution, you got to think back to socks shape, outlier, center, spread. Um, we're talking about free throw shots of a single person, 85%. There's not going to be outliers, so we want to look at shape, center, spread. Okay. But before we do that, we're talking about the random variable x. And I want to know the probability of him making 80 exact, um, he's 85 percent free throw shooter. You got to start thinking binomial. So here's my annotated formula sheet. So binomial, and we're, um, for the random variable x, it's not just the random variable x, but we think it's going to actually be this binomial. So let's take a look and check our conditions for binomial. For binomial, it's bins. B i N S, and hopefully we remember B stands for binary. Are there, you have a success and you have a failure. Yes, he can either make the shot or he can miss the shot. Okay, so we've got binary. And then I stands for independence. It says assume each shot is independent. So we're told that, so we're good for independent. N stands for a set number of trials. It says he's going to shoot it 100 times, so your N is 100, so we're good there. And S stands for the same probability of success each time. It says he's an 85% free throw shooter, so we're good there too because the probability of success is 0.85. So now we know that this is a binomial. And why that is important is because when I go to talk about the shape, center, and spread, or the variability, variability is a word we used a lot when describing um, spread, <clears throat> is where I get my information from. So I'm going to skip the shape for right now, and I'm going to talk about the center. So the center would be the mean in a binomial distribution. And to find the mean, it's n times p. That's our expected value. This is how many we expect him to make. So our center is n times p, which our n is 100, our p is 0.85. So we would expect the mean of this distribution of x to be 85. Okay, so it should center on 85 if he's actually an 85% free throw shooter. The spread, spread a standard deviation. So here we're talking about our binomial. We did our center. Here's our spread. We want to use this formula right here. So to find the standard deviation of the random variable x, we want n times p times 1 minus p and take the square root of it. So the square root of 100 times 0.85 times 0.15 will give us a standard deviation of 3.57. So I can talk about the spread now, the variability. Now shape. When we're talking about proportions, because we're talking about a proportion of success, how you determine shape is n times p and n times 1 minus p. And so hopefully we're remembering you must have at least 10 successes and 10 failures in order to have an approximately normal shape. 
So we just have to check. We already actually did n times p because that's also the mean. n times p is 85, which is greater than or equal to 10. And n times 1 minus p would be 100 times 0.15, which is 15, which is also greater than or equal to 10. We have at least 10 successes and 10 failures, which means our distribution is approximately normal. <clears throat> okay, the question goes on to ask for us to find the probability that the player makes exactly 80 free throws. This is binomial, so we got to use the binomial formula. So taking a look at our annotated formula sheet, here's our binomial formula right here. Okay, and so this says where x is 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, okay? So when we're talking binomial, we're talking about the probability and exact number of successes. So looking at our formula, I'm going to write it out from the formula sheet so we can talk about it. Okay. It looks complicated, but when we work on it, it kind of makes sense. So what's the probability that the random variable x equals a particular number? Okay, and that's our total um, number of trials. So n is the number of trials, which is in this case, it's going to be 100. x is the number of successes that we're wanting out of those trials which is uh, that we want to know the probability of them making 80 free throws. Okay. This is not a fraction. This is actually a combination that we were calculating in our calculator using NCR under our probability button. P is the probability of success. 1 minus P is the probability of failure. Then we have our exponents. X is the number of successes. So this number gets used again. And N minus X is the number of failures. So we can set this up like we would um, using the formula. So we want to know the probability that the random variable x, the number, remember, which is the number of free throws he makes out of 100 attempts, we want to know the probability that that x value is 80. So using the formula, our, we had 100 trials, we want 80 successes. The probability of success is 0.85, and I want 80 of those. The probability of failure is 0.15, and if there's 80 successes, that means there's 20 failures out of 100. And so we can put this into our calculator, and we'll get out 0.04. Now, I didn't show you how to put it in the calculator because really I'd prefer you to use your calculator in a different way and actually use the binomial distribution um, in the calculator. All right, to use this successfully in your calculator on the AP exam, let's take out our calculator. We're going to go second bars, which is the distribution, which is just down next to the down arrow. So second bars. And we have a whole bunch of different things on here. My arrow up, and I'm going to go to Binome PDF. So I'm going to write down the what I'm using. I'm using Binome PDF. And how I knew that I had to use the PDF versus the CDF. P, we're looking at a particular number. In this case, we're looking at 80. So that's why we want to use the binomial PDF. It's only going to give me the probability for that number. Press enter. Our trials, he's going to make 100 free throws. In 100 free throws, what's the probability? He makes at least 80 of them. The probability of success is 0.85. 
and the x value that we're interested in is him making 80 of the free throws. So we'll put 80 in there. <clears throat> if your calculator doesn't prompt you like mine does, you are going to have to remember the order that these items get put in. Know your own calculator. Okay, and so this is what it's going to look like. So that we're going to write it down. 100.8580. The 100, remember, was the number of trials. 85 was the probability of success. And 80 was the particular X value that we're going to work, that we were looking for. You have to label these to get full credit on the AP exam. So written this way, by known PDF, with these three numbers and they are all labeled, you will get the same credit as if you wrote out the whole formula and gave the answer. And the answer will be the same. Okay. I prefer you use the calculator just because you're less likely to make an error. I just want to make sure that you get full credit for using your calculator function. Okay, so that's if you're looking for a particular number. But sometimes they ask for a range of numbers. And if they ask for a range of numbers, like in our question here, find the probability that the player makes at least 80 free throws. At least means greater than or equal to. Okay, if you need a range of numbers, that means you'd have to do a binomial PDF for each individual number. But remember, when we look at our calculator and we go into those distributions, just below PDF was binomial CDF. Okay, so CDF means accumulate. So I'm going to just write down, leave yourself some room because we're going to go add some more stuff to this. So, so binome CDF, because you have to identify the distribution, and C means cumulative. All right, so let's, we know we're going to use that, but let's talk about it. We want to know the probability that our random variable X, which is the number of free throws he makes out of 100 attempts, we want it to be at least 80. So we want to know the whole range of numbers. So if let's make a number line here. These are possible free throws. He can make zero right, one right, two right, and we could keep going. But I want to know the probability of making 80 to 100 correct. If we use the PDF function, we'd have to go for 80, 81, 82, 83, all the way up to 100, and then add all the probabilities together. CDF will let us do a range, but we have to remember that if we're doing a range, the cumulative always accumulates from the left. So it starts adding from the left. Okay. So we actually want to know the numbers that are on the right. So just like when we use our Z table and we want to know the upper, we got to do one minus. Okay. Now, what am I going to accumulate through? So we know we have 100 trials. We already established that. We know the probability of success is 0.85, but I need to know what, how many numbers am I going to add through? Well, 80 or above is what I want to know. So that means I'm actually adding to 79. From 0 to 79, I want to accumulate all of these numbers in here and then subtract them from one to tell me 80 to 100. So we're actually accumulating through 79. That's the X value of interest there <clears throat> because 80 is included in the at least. And when we put this into our calculator, we get one minus 0 0.0066, which equals 0 0.9. He has a 93.4% of making at least 80 free throws. Pretty good. He's a pretty good free throw through shooter. All right. So the only AP tip I have for you in this section, if you're going to use the binomial function on your calculator, which is what I recommend to make sure you're getting the correct number, you must specify that the distribution is binomial and you must also clearly identify N and P. So how we have written here works perfectly. We copied what we were using in the, in the calculator, binome CDF. This indicates P 
that the distribution is binomial. And then we clearly labeled N and P. Labeling X's are a really good idea too. Once you've got the first two labeled, label the last one. Okay, and having this will get you full points, full credit. So um, be very careful with that. Make sure you're uh, knowing how your calculator works. Make sure you're clearly communicating to a reader. I understand what I'm doing. I know where my numbers came from and then give them the answer. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in class.